So I, I want to take you into that morning. I want to go into the North Tower. I spent a lot of time this week reading the NIST reports. And of course, you know, this report. Now I've read it. I, I spent, after 9-11, I got involved with Peaceful Tomorrows, and it was the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. I got to go to Japan. I spoke in Bogota. I, you know, I, I really had an opportunity to speak what I felt. And I thought that the Afghan war and the Iraq war were just ridiculous, regardless of who did it. The story being 19 Arabs killed my son. And I said, what are we going to war for? Let's bring them to justice. So I had the opportunity to join Peaceful Tomorrows. And we did astounding things. And I was able to speak to the world. For years, I went to high schools. Everybody wanted me to speak because I wasn't seeking revenge. And they loved that message. But then after going to these 9-11 commission, I made 90% of these commission hearings. And it was a joke. And again, it was after Condoleezza Rice spoke in the hearings. And it was a filibuster. She could care less about what happened. She just kept saying, well, we have to keep things in historical perspective. Well, I've never been so pissed off in all my life. And that's when I made the decision. I had an interview with CBC afterwards. And I just, I just, you know, people all around, I said, this is effing ridiculous. I was so pissed off. Now, I've carried that anger. That's why I get so emotional, because I have that anger. Tremendous anger. And I have to really watch myself. I have to work hard to keep my sanity. Because that's all I do. And I know the truth hasn't been told. You know, you look at this book, and we, uh, Manny mentioned Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. 441 footnotes in this book, 441 footnotes talking about the story, the masterminds of 9-11. Yet this man was tortured 183 times. That's what they based the whole book on. And it's based on torture, yet American citizens accept this, that we will actually torture people to get a confession. And I doubt very much the man is alive. Through my investigation, when I do the 9-11 investigations, I'm also trying to find out exactly how my son died. He came over from Fulton Street. He made the decision that he was going to go to the top. Now, we got no phone calls from him. And I would think if the plane had hit, he would start running. So certainly there was no injuries to his back. Back of his skull was intact. And he had post-mortem burns. That means I think, he, I think he was walking in and the huge explosion took place and I think the glass and the force of the explosion did the damage to him. And then someone finally picked him up and took him to the morgue right away and again he was one of the first ten bodies. His wounds or his death, I think it was immediately spontaneous. I don't think he ever knew what hit him because all his injuries were in the chest, lacerations of the chest, his whole face was blown apart. To show you what a great investigation, I mean, I, I really, really have such contempt for these people in the 9-11 Commission. This is their entire investigation of what happened up there at the towers. A jet fuel fireball erupted upon impact and shot down at least one bank, one bank of elevators. The fireball exploded onto numerous lower levels, including the 77th and 22nd, the west side lobby level, and the B4 level, four stories below the ground. That's it. So that's, you know, they're explaining how everyone died by just generally saying a fireball the freight elevators which are in the middle the doors were totally blown out and all the windows of the lobby were blown out now this is 208 by 208 208 square and the Commission says a fireball went down one of the banks obviously then came into the lobby and blew out all those windows $10,000 machinery just blown up to the machine shop on the third level, absolutely blown up. Yet what do they talk about explosives? Nothing, absolutely nothing. The thought of fire or fuel coming down, all the, any of the things is almost impossible. All the shafts, top to bottom until it got to the bottom, are made of drywall. 
Well, those gasoline particles, they would be grabbing on. And we're saying a fireball. It's impossible for a fireball to come out, even if it was coming from the top, to come out and then blow up all those windows in the North Tower. It is impossible. Absolutely impossible. The white soot that was in the lobby, it's not from fire. It's from explosions. Fire leaves of different type of soot. These pieces of shit, they, what did they do? They, it's all junk, absolute junk. And I get one goddamn little paragraph to describe how my son was murdered. That's it, right there. That little stupid thing. You're saying, well, 2270 lobby and basement were all destroyed because of our stupid ass firewall they keep talking about. Well, that makes you angry. And it's not astounding that a government would kill 3,000 people. Not, of course, they wouldn't know how many people were going to die. This is the way governments work. It's pure Machiavellian. All governments, not just the United States. Again, I don't care if they convict anybody for 9-11. But this is what has to stop. This is what people have to look at. That's why you have to study history. Why wouldn't the United States look at the world the way it is? Why wouldn't they do 9-11? And I don't, I don't care what other people say. No one's done the legwork that I've done. And they call me a conspiracist theorist. Well, I'll tell them to stick it up their ass. I, uh, I don't really care.